paper with creative focus uh, from data analysis to visualization on the web. And Neem has a lot of experience with Dutch open geodata, open street map, and skill in artificial intelligence, posits, cushies, map box, everything. <laughs> and Neem loves to share knowledge through workshops and talks. And go ahead, feel free to start when you're ready. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, yeah, that's me. I also have my uh, presentation ready. You can share the screen. Yes. So uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. So for me, it's good afternoon. For you, maybe it's a uh, good morning. Um, yeah, as my introduction said, I'm a freelance web map developer. And I make a lot of maps. I like make a lot of um, applications with maps in them. And um, I notice a lot of things. Um, oh, my camera is not working. Can you still hear me now? Yes. No. I don't know what happened. Okay, I'll just continue. Um, in my work field, I run into um, a lot of maps. I see also a lot of applications with maps, a lot of atlases with a lot of data in it. And I've noticed that there are some stuff that uh, are working very well, but there's also some stuff that I can think that we can do better. And I work with a lot of web developers. I also work with the clients. So I really also work with the user sometimes. And I noticed that it's really hard to communicate with both of them. Um, so let's put it on a map, which is a phrase that often confuses me as well, because I noticed that non-GIS people use this phrase, let's put it on a map, for a lot of stuff. And recently somebody said, let's put these uh, privacy issues on the map. And I was like, how are you going to put that on the map? And then I have to realize they don't literally mean to draw something on a map, but they mean draw attention to a subject. So that's also what I wanted to do today. I want to draw attention to the subjects on how we put stuff onto the map. And then I promised you that I'm going to tell you how to design this in a, a cuddly, eye-blinking, digestible and accessible way. Well, just to um, have a little bit of expedition management, I do not have the answer to this. And I also think that 20 minutes is uh, way too short to teach you how to do this in a good way. But I do have a lot of ideas. I do have a lot of experience with this and I have a lot of examples. So I also want to take you through some of these examples uh, today. Uh, examples that I came across in my work field, examples that I saw online. Uh, and there are gonna be some really hands-on tips that you maybe could use for when you make a, a web map. And there are a lot of maps out there these days. And I think also with the open source software available, with all the open data available, everybody's able to make web maps. I see web developers these days that don't do anything with GIS that make um, web-based, map-based applications. So um, there are a lot of maps out there. And when I talk about this today in this presentation, I already used a lot of terms like a geo visualization, like a geo dashboard, an interactive map, map based application, cartographic interface. And I think these are all correct. I really want to talk about a digital interactive map based application where the map is the main focus of application. And when we look at what you need to make such a map-based application, I came across this really great framework for amazing maps by small multiples. And they really define it in a nice way. So they said, we have the right context, you put relevant data on top of it. Then we have some useful controls and we have intuitive interaction. And I really loved it at a first glance, but I think they still miss something. So I define it like this. If you want to make a map-based application, there are three main components to it. We have to do the cartography. So maybe what in this framework they call the right context. We have to design a background map or a topographic map. 
we have uh, the interaction design. So everything that comes with the interaction on the map. But what they miss, I think, is the front end design. Because next to a map, we often also have a header. We have some buttons. We have some layers that we want to turn on. Maybe we have a search bar. Uh, maybe there's some extra panels showing some extra information. And we really need to think about how to design this as well. So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about these three steps. And the first two are going to be a bit short. And I want to pay a little bit more attention to the last one, because I really think that there is a gap uh, in designing the interaction design. Um, yeah, we heard already a lot at Fossil G, I think, about vector tiles. And I think with the coming of the vector tiles, there is this whole new kind of cartography going on. It's so easy to style a map these days. There's so much possible. Um, so we are able these days to make a unique map. Uh, we are able to customize our map to our applications, to the company that we're uh, making the maps for. So why not do this? And I really once had in um, uh, one project I was working with a front end designer and they literally just like pasted an image of Google Maps into the design. I tried to find the file on my computer, but I couldn't find the design anymore. But they literally just pasted in Google Maps like this is where the map is going to be. And that was it. So they designed the whole application, but they forgot about the map. So cartography, very important. And I think we can do so much fun stuff with that. For example, I really love this uh, one. Uh, Stamen designed the Facebook map. And they have this whole blog post on how they made the Facebook map, the cartography, and how they integrated the colors of Facebook into the map. And as they say it, um, the map sits more seamlessly inside it, it as a larger product experience. So the colors um, they choose for the land, for the water, for the place labels, really give the map a Facebook aesthetic. And I think that's super important. So this is how the map looks like. Also, the blue has this Facebook kind of blue. So making your cartography fit with your brand identity is something really nice that we can do these things. But next to just making the map integrate with your application, we also have to look at the map still in itself. And one other tip that I really wanted to tell you today is leave out all the clutter. Just visualize on the map what you need. For example, this application shows you um, municipality data, but they plot it on top of a topographic map. But for showing the summaries of municipalities, we do not need all the topographic labels. So maybe we could just not show a background map at all, leave out all the labels, like, for example, this application, which also shows municipality um, values, but they don't even show you a background map. They just show you the values. So that was really, really short on cartography, because I think we all agree on how important that could be. Let's have a look at front end design. And actually, I just have <laughs> one tip for the front end design is hire front end designer. And I <laughs> this is from my own experience because I developed an application last year and I started out on my own and I thought I can do this and I can develop this web application that looks really nice, different, that looks easy to use. And um, this is what I designed. So this is how the application looked like. And then we got a front end um, designer in our team and he really, really quickly turned everything around and he made it into this. So this is how the application looks like today. It looks much more calm. Um, and just to point out some stuff. So for example, the header in the top, he really removed that. So the header is became really small. And he, he said he wanted to give more space to the map. So there's actually more space to the map than in the old application. Then also he put the search bar at the left panel, which was here, to group together all the mapping, um, yeah, all the map functionalities that you do, that you want to look for location, you want to turn on a layer, are all grouped together. And also he reduced the amount of text uh, in the application. So for example, the bar on the right is where you could configure your um, map look. So you can turn on labels, you can choose topographic labels, or you can choose administrative labels, you can put on boundaries. And he just 
turned it into this really small bar at the bottom with less uh, text. I also love it that he made this transparent bar at the bottom so you can still see it's part of the map, like you can configure the map. So putting stuff together, which go together, drawing attention to the stuff that is really important. These are really good lessons that I learned from him and I was never able to do that on my own. So hire a front-end designer, but also don't let them do everything by themselves because the front-end designer would have never been able to design the map in uh, the brand's identity colors uh, that it is now. So we came to the my last part, but I think it's the biggest part and I have uh, some great examples again, interaction design. So what is the interaction design? And interaction design is designing how a user is gonna use your applications, what they have to do to manipulate your application. And we want to design this in a way that the tasks that the user have to do are easy and they can do them with minimum effort. So it must be, really easy to access, really easy to understand, and also don't make your user get frustrated. You wanna give them a pleasurable experience. And maps have also become increasingly interactive. And I love it that Robert, Robert E. Rod gave this definition of a cartographic interaction, because I do believe that interaction on websites is slightly different than cartographic interaction. And cartographic interaction is everything that has to do with the map everything that's going on on the map. And I worked with web developers and they don't know anything about this. They don't get the GIS part. And then I worked with GIS people. They don't know anything about the web um, design and interaction design. So there's a gap. And I think we should really uh, put this on the map and draw some attention to it. So cartographic interaction. And then there's a distinction between um, direct interaction and indirect interaction. The um, direct interaction is what Robert E. Rod says is the panning and the zooming. And this is already all defined in the mapping libraries out there. So I'm not gonna talk about that, the panning, zooming. It's, it's all there and it works fine. It's more about the indirect interaction. So when I push a button, what happens with the map? When I do look at a search bar, what's gonna happen with the map? So everything that the user can do to manipulate the map And my first example, um, it might sound really obvious. My first example is action reaction. If a user clicks on something, they want to see a reaction. So I click on a button, I want to see something on the map. And this might sound really, really logical, but I've seen so many applications where this goes wrong. So we want to, I'm, I'm just going to show you. So for example, this application, the Disico card, uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, I'm pressing some layers, but nothing is happening onto the map. And this is, your user could get frustrated. They could think like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. The application is broken. And you don't want a user to feel like that. What is actually going on, and for us as GIS people, maybe it makes a lot of sense. These layers are not available on the zoom level. Because it's such a detailed, uh, data, it's only available when you zoom in. So as you can see in the in the, the, the movie, if I zoom in, then um, you can see the data. But a user, and especially people that don't know that much about GIS, might not even know this. And they get a frustrating experience using your application. So let's prevent this from happening. And I have some examples on how we maybe could prevent this from happening. So I really love this solution. Um, this is a map made by a GeoGap. Some friends of mine are working there. And they made this, um, this panel in the top that literally says, zoom in to see the parcels. So they have an application where you can view all the parcels on the map, which are only available when you zoom in. And then they also added this progress bar that you can even see like how much further you have to zoom in until you see the parcels. And whenever you see them, it disappears because then you don't need it anymore. I think this is a really nice solution to give your user an action on what they should do. So another solution, and this is one that I made myself, is um, when you click on a layer, which is only available at a certain zoom level, and you're not looking at that zoom level, the map automatically 
zooms in to that zoom level and the data will show up. So that if a user zooms out, then they consciously zoomed out so they know why the data is disappearing again. And I also found another example, and this is an application that is not always working really well, but what they did well in one way or another is that if a layer is not visible at a certain zoom level, they also make it impossible to turn on the layer. I think it could be a solution, but maybe it's still not the most beautiful solution because there's still something that's not working. So a user might still get the idea that the application might be broken or that they did something wrong. So um, yeah, I, I hope that you could give me maybe more ideas on how we could solve this, because I think this is really a cartographic interaction problem that we should solve with uh, smart solutions. Another thing that I come, come across sometimes, and what really, really frustrated me, is what's going on with all these layers? And maybe you already saw it. There are tons of applications out there in which I can turn on all the layers at the same time. For example, here there is a lot of um, data about energy use, about the environment, and I can just click, 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 and the map gets this one big mess of data on the map. And especially it gets confusing when you don't see anything happening on the map and you continue clicking. And as you can see, also the legend is just getting so big. Also another application where they even have a uh, fully covering data layers. So the data layers are always covering all of the surface of the Netherlands. So it doesn't make any visual sense to show all the layers at the same time. And again, you have a bunch of legends on the right hand side. And as a user, you might get frustrated, you might get confused, and we don't want that to happen. So I, in my opinion, I would say just show one layer at the same time. So in my application, I did a, if a user clicked on another layer, the other layer turns off. Also, the legend is changing. So you can really, really see that you're looking at a different data layer. And I often also get the question from users, hey, but I want to be able to compare layers. Why can't I turn them on? And why can't I turn on more than one layer? And I always reply with them like, OK, if you want to compare two layers, like which two do you want to compare? What is your purpose and how can we solve it? And I never actually got an answer. So everybody asks for the functionality to turn on multiple layers, but nobody can tell me why they want to do it or what they want to reach by doing it. So another solution might be if they want to know two or three attributes at the same time from, for example, like a building or a municipality, we could have add a pop-up or we could add a panel showing multiple attributes, but plotting them visually on top of the map is not going to give them any more understanding about the data. So for me, it's showing one layer at the same time. And that also solves this problem of this endless going on of a legend, because then we also can show one legend. And that got me started to think about legend. And actually, I almost thought, let, let's do a talk only about legend, because there was so much that you can say about legends out there. So I just picked a few examples on how we maybe can improve uh, a legend on a map. And again, it's an interaction thing as well. I found this application, and you have to press this uh, show the complete legend before you can see the whole legend. And do making a good user interaction design is about minimizing effort, so reducing the amount of clicks that a user has to do. So I think this is really a pity, because as you can see, there is a lot of space on the right-hand side. Maybe we could even put the legend on the map and show the complete map, uh, show the complete legend. Even especially when the legend is just really important to understand your data, I don't get why we should hide it. And also, um, also with everything which is possible these days online, I think that using the interactivity of a web page can also be part of your legend. So why not make it a little bit more interactive? So I really thought this was a smart solution. Uh, it's about earthquakes, volcanoes, and uh, emission, and they show just the three. Um, 
the three uh, different symbols. Uh, and then when you mouse over on them, you don't even have to click, it's just a mouse over action. You get a little bit more information on what it means and what the size means. And I think this is a great way to solve your design. Let the legend not take up so much space, but make it informative as well. And let's just take it a little bit further. This is the Opportunity Atlas. And I really, really love what they did in the top corner. So um, the legend is also a graph of the distribution of the data. And then even the black dot is representing the black, the, is the country that you clicked on. I think do think it's a pity that they show a standard legend in the bottom, and then you really have to open up the distribution graph. But I really love the way that a legend can become so much more. So the legend itself can be used to explain a map, but it's also an explanation in itself. Yeah. And this really makes a map, a web map really interactive and really being able to manipulate it and understand it better. And why not even draw a legend and make the legend part of the application? And I really love this one. It's a map about refugees. And what they did here is they didn't just show like two blocks of red and blue and then with the names behind it, but they integrated the legend into the application uh, with this um, bar at the top, which is also at the same time a toggle. So you can toggle from the origin country to the asylum country and then the data changes. So the legend is choosing your layers. It's a toggle. It's so much more than just a legend. And everybody will understand this when you open up this application. It just makes so much sense. So why not even don't make a legend, but try to integrate the legend into the design of the whole application. Yeah, and that um, was all of my examples that I have. So in summary, there is so much possible these days when it is about um, developing web maps, about developing um, applications online. So really use it. There's no excuse anymore to say, oh, but I used that standard software and I cannot do this. Everything is possible to make a better user experience, a better web map um, for your users. And really think about how we can integrate the cartography with the front end design and the inter in interaction design as well. We really need to integrate all these things to come to one application that looks as an integrated project and people like to use and uh, really understand how they can use it. And work together with all these web developers that already have great knowledge about how they have to develop um, web applications. Uh, work together with designers and how they design the applications, but always, always be part of it and keep into mind that there is this GIS way of thinking that we need and that we always should think about the map and how the map is interactive with. So thank you so much for listening to my talk. If you have any comments, if you have any other ideas or any other great examples, just, yeah, let me know. I'm curious about what you think about this. Hey, hello, and thank you uh, for your presentation, Nin. It's been really interesting and useful for all of us. We were praying that the maps we created uh, wouldn't appear there. <laughs> uh, and yes, we have a lot of questions and a lot of interaction. I, I don't know if we can answer all, the, all but we can start. I will I'm remove curious. the... Do you have information where I can read more on this topic? Oh, yeah. Um, I think I would definitely uh, advise you to read um, literature by Robert E. Roth, because he does some, uh, he has some papers about the cartographic interaction. Perfect. And he also uh, did some great presentations about that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, what can I do when I have a lot of layers to show? I always have that problem. <laughs> well, it, I don't think it's bad that you have a lot of layers, but just show, make sure that the user can just view one at a time, unless there is a really good reason to show two at the same time. 
But then also make sure that if you show these two layers at the same time, their, the visualization of the layers are adapted to each other. And I think that's the problem when you have like 50 or 100 layers, you cannot make sure that any combinations of these layers together on a map will make visually sense. So then yeah. just don't do it. Don't show all the layers at the same time. Just make sure the user can just click one layer at the same time. Perfect. Thank you. And there is another one. Does the platform have online analysis or, ju or just a card to meaning the analysis already finished? Uh, in my application, we there is not analysis on the application itself. It's done beforehand. You can do can look a bit further into the data. So I don't. I'm not sure which platform they mean, but maybe I hope this is an answer. Yes, maybe. Okay. Um, here is another one. How about using a center of uh, the polygons and show that when they zoom out? and then turn off centroid when polygon became visible. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's, a, it's a great example of showing uh, data on different zoom levels, because that's also a really good point when we think about the cartographic interaction is also about on different zoom levels, maybe you want to show different abstraction levels of your data. So on higher zoom levels, not even show the polygons on, until you zoom in. Yeah. Perfect. Um, how do I become a better web map application designer? What is your background? Do you know a training course Ooh. that you could suggest? I don't know. I don't know any training yet. No, maybe, maybe you, you, you can do it. You can yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, literally. So I, I studied GIS, um, but I, re I just my personal interest on how to make web maps, and I've just been busy with it for the last few years, just thinking about what it means to make a better application with a map, because there is nothing out there. And also with working with web developers that don't know anything about maps, it just I just noticed like, oh, there's something that I should add to this because they don't think about it. Uh, yeah. I really have to teach them like, but a map works like this. So don't forget that we have to <laughs> zoom in in order that if you click, you center. And yeah, the it's. Um, so I don't know, just through experience, I hope there would be like some good trainings and courses on this, because I think it's really important, yeah. Yeah, especially when a lot of non-GIS people these days start yes. making maps, um, you can really see they forget about that. Okay, thank you. And what do you think of printing map from a website PDF? <laughs> well, yeah, um, I don't know. What, what do you want to do with it? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> yeah, of course you could do it if you want to put that on your wall. I, I don't know. You are free to do it. <laughs> You're free to do it. Here is another one. Love the idea of the Zoom lever bar. Easy, it's open source and available to use. I don't know if they have it open source. Uh, I do think you can make it pretty easy because a lot of mapping libraries have these map on Zoom functions or so you can, or map get zoom function. So I think it would be really easy to build this component. Um, yeah. And and it depends on which uh, um, framework you're using, I think also. Yes, that depends on. Okay. Um, what tools do you recommend for creating, uh, creating such interactive legend integrated into the application? Oof, um, I really love D3. So uh, D3 is a data-driven uh, documents JavaScript library. And I, I love using that for making these legends uh, and, and combining it with it. So um, I think you could do it with that. But I think you could do it with JavaScript as well. Um, OK. D3. For me, it's D3. D3. <laughs> Everything is D3. OK, thank you. And the last one, because we are, we are going to start the next talk. Yeah, um, do you have any favorite books or other research on geodata, bees, cartography, and maps you use your experience? experience? Um, I have a lot of books about information visualization and graphic visualization, stuff like that, but not for UX in cartography yet. Okay. Okay. No. 
But so, there's no, there, I think there's one book on this topic. So there's yes, still because you oh, have, there is some about cartography, some about web development, some about interaction design, about data visualization, and you read them all and you have to combine it yourself. Okay. Nin, thank you for your presentation. Um, I